In the book of Acts, we hear the following words about the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. This image is one that is worth sitting with for quite a while. It has inspired artists, poets, and musicians, all trying to capture this image, its intensity and its purpose, its imagination and its calling. Some like to see this as a physical description of what took place. Others see it as metaphorical. But whichever way you think of it, the Holy Spirit descended with intensity and ferocity. She arrived to bring change and wind and possibility and fire and a whole new vision of how to understand God and God's presence in our lives and in the world. It was exciting and transformational, calling people into radical change and new life. And ever since then, it feels as if as if we've been trying to put a stopper back in that bottle known to us as the Holy Spirit. We've tried to define and control and explain her. We have tried to limit the wisdom of God, the grace of God, the, the hope of God that was known at the point in time the Holy Spirit was unleashed on the church when it was in its infancy. We have tried to limit what the Holy Spirit might do We've tried to suggest that this spirit was not about bringing change and invitation and a complete expansion of how we understand the grace of God. We've tried to limit the spirit's wind and fire so that it has diminished to a small breath and a tiny spark. But that is not how the spirit arrived and not how the spirit should be understood. The Holy Spirit of God is about a new and mesmerizing understanding that God's love is radical, that God's blessing goes further than the limits we might place upon it. For God's compassion is more far-reaching than only a gift intended for a small few who agree to place certain limits on this Holy Spirit. And so in the church of this day and age, the Holy Spirit continues to come with great wind and fire. The Holy Spirit continues to breathe upon us and ignite us to live out this radical grace of God. But can the church of this day and age, while we seem to struggle with declining numbers and an aging demographic, know that same wind and fire inviting us to step out of what we have always done and allow the voice of the Spirit to speak to us and invite us anew. In this diocese, we are paying special attention to the voice of this Spirit even now. Where is God calling us to consider new ministry? Where is God calling us to plant new churches? Where is God calling us to bring together faith and science? Where are we being called to respond to the climate emergency by living out our faith in God, the architect of this magnificent creation? Where is God calling us to live out love of neighbor for the homeless, the suffering, the addicted, the forgotten, the ignored? Where is God calling us to live out reconciliation that is radical and hope-filled? Where is God calling us to see the image of God in all persons? All persons. Where are we as a church now called to go in response to being blessed by new wind and new fire? Where are we being called as a result of living in a pandemic for more than two years? What are we being invited to focus upon as the church of this time and this place? Pentecost was not just a day in the church 2000 years ago, but is every day in the church. Every day where we recognize that the Holy Spirit continues to blow through us and set our minds on fire with a radical love of God, neighbor and ourselves that infects every aspect of who we are. 
This Holy Spirit continues to come to us, inviting us to be changed, for we can never be the same when that wind shifts us and ignites our thinking. Come, Holy Spirit, come.